Welcome to chapter nine. We're gonna talk about the looping screen. So I'm gonna press the loop button here. We've already gone through the process of uh, talking about the top level looping, just you know, using the record and play buttons on the top level of the unit. Now we're actually gonna talk about the more sophisticated looping features that we've got here. So the first thing we're gonna look at is we got these six buttons here represented by the, uh, the keypad. And I'm just gonna record a little loop and I'm gonna turn on the metronome just so I can hear it myself here. So I can uh, you know, make this loop in time. I'm just gonna do a beat. Now we have this loop running that you can hear. So, well, what can I do with that? I've got some buttons here that tell me I could erase it. I'm not gonna do that, but it's pretty straightforward. You press erase, it says you wanna erase it, you say yes. You can clear it, which means you're not actually deleting the entire loop. You're clearing this particular layer, uh, there's a particular track. And I'm gonna go, I'll show you how to change tracks and you could come back and you could, uh, you could change tracks. I could undo, which is to undo whatever the previous action is that I've done. Now, of course, I've only recorded one layer so far, so there's nothing I can undo. You basically, you look at that first level and that's all you can do. I've got two times here. Now, I just pressed that and you'll notice that the waveform here doubled. So now I actually have twice as long of a section that I can start looping over. So if I wanted to just beatbox for, say, two bars and then I wanted four bars of beatboxing or conversely, four to eight or eight to 16, uh, it allows you to sort of record a smaller part. You have to be a little less accurate during that. You know, you can just get it right for a smaller period of time and then double that. The caveat about doubling any of this is it has to happen right away. You can't go off and record other layers and then come back and say, hey, double that first layer. It doesn't work that way. You've got to do it right away. Last button here is reverse. So let's hear everything go in reverse. That sounds very weird. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop the loop here. Now we talked a little bit about metronome and I'm uh, just going to jot into or into the uh, setup menu here, into the metronome, and I'm gonna uh, put the headphone through the uh, all routing so you guys can hear it again. So we've got three different states from the metronome. We've got on, you can hear it, it's on all the time, it's ticking, it's gonna be synced to whatever your, your output device is, whatever's tapped in here is gonna be synced to the loop. You've got sh, or sh, what that means is the metronome is still active and locked. So all of the looping functions, pressing of the play button, doing any overdubs, any of the timed effects, delays, any of that that are happening with your vocal are still all locked together. You just can't hear the metronome. So to give you an example of how that works, if I try and tap in the tempo here, see how it says loop synced? It's because a loop has been recorded and now it's saying you can't tap a new tempo. You've told me that the tempo is, I think in this case, 123 beats per minute and I'm not letting you go off of that because it'll mess up all of my loop timings. Uh, so that's a good thing to know that if it's in sh, sh mode there that it's already locked in. It means that if you were to set a delay, that delay would be timed to that same tempo and so on. If you press it to off, now you're in freewheeling mode. You can tap a new tempo in and all sorts of stuff, but things can get fairly off time because you may never get back to that tempo again just by tapping it, so the loop won't know what to do, it won't know where to start and stop. So if you're using any kind of click track or you're playing to external tracks or anything like that, you really have to make sure that you leave the metronome set to on or sh so that uh, you can maintain your sync. Uh, one thing we don't do is time stretching, so you can't tap in a new tempo and have your loop you know, time itself out to that new tempo. Uh, that was a, a something that we weren't able to pull off. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn the metronome back to sh here. I'm gonna go into the routing and I'm gonna put it just back to my headphones, you know, back to the loop page here. So at the top level here, you'll notice there's some other stuff here. I've got some slider effects I can deal with. And in the same way that I dealt with slider effects in previous screens, it's the same thing here. I can do a filter. And now you might ask, how do I change that? Do I press effects and then tap the, the, the button here uh, just the way that I did to change a slider effect when I was in the effects screen? Well, we've done a consistent movement, but of course using the relevant button, which means in effects you press and hold effects and then tap the arrow. When you're doing a loop change to your, your slider effects, you press and hold the loop button and then tap. So I would tap here to do a slow, say slow down. So I let it run, now change to slow down. Okay, so if you wanted to change your slider effect, that's where you would do it. So that covers that first page there. And as you add layers on, you know, if I added another layer here, I could use undo so we could let it get it playing. Hey, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, yeah. This harmony sounds weird. Hey, yeah. If I wanted to undo. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, yeah. This harmony sounds weird. Hey, yeah. I hit undo and it's gone. 
So that's uh, just how the undo works. And you can actually keep coming around and around and around without stopping pressing record and just add layer after layer after layer after layer and then undo them all at one time, which is really neat. But now you say, okay, I've got this beatbox. I actually want to put something else on a different track and I want to be able to mute it and I want to do all sorts of cool stuff like that. Let's go to the press loop again and it gives us a new page. So now we see the number of loops that are available to us and in this case I've used up a certain amount of time so it's reduced my overall number of loops and we describe that in the, uh, in the written manual as well how that whole process works. So now I have five loops available to me. I've recorded on loop one so if I, uh, if I want to record something on another loop I would make sure that select is bracketed here so that's by using these buttons you can see how as I move along here I can move between select mute and shots so in select mode I would say I want to select the second loop there and I want to add something to it now what you might say is I've got these two separated tracks I really want to mute that one track how am I going to do that you go over to select mute, now I'm in mute mode, and when this is running, I can take away that second track. I can even take away the first track and only have the second track. I can have them both come in at the same time. So this is a really cool way of kind of mixing your tracks on the fly. And you basically go through the same process to select a new loop and then to, uh, to, to mute it. You know, you go back to mute, you go select, you select the track, you record on it, you go mute, you can mute them all in and out. Shots mode allows you to hit them. And you can see how in shots mode the slider effects still work as well. So this is where you can start getting really creative about the way that this thing works. Um, let's see, is there anything else I haven't talked about in looping? Nope. I think that's it. So uh, the real trick to this is if you're using the metronome, it's going to really help you to, to quantize those uh, those timings of your button presses. And then it's just about getting creative with the sounds that you put in and the layers and then how you make them come and go throughout your performance. And keep in mind that looping isn't all about beatboxing and doing electronic sounds. You can very easily set your loop input, like we talked about in the setup menu, to just your guitar. And you could just be sitting along playing a guitar you know, riff, uh, it'll say a few chords, you decide you want to take a guitar solo. You just spend you know, one passage of those uh, guitar chords, you lay it down into a loop, and then you press play, and you start taking your solo. And from the crowd's perspe perspective, it's seamless. They hear you playing the chords, maybe even singing along, and then all of a sudden, you're taking a solo, and those guitar, guitar chords are still playing underneath, which is a really, really fantastic way to use looping and not have it sort of sound all electronic, um, which is something that I think is a bit of a misconception when it comes to the way looping can be used in performance. So there you go. That comes to the end of our looping section.